Greetings. This is the one you've known as Jesus the Christ. Prayer connects you to the unseen forces that guide you in your daily life. You're always connected to these forces, but prayer opens the door on your side to allow them to work more closely with you. Prayer is a way of saying, I am open, willing, and ready to receive whatever I need to unfold my plan, to evolve, to learn my lessons, to heal, to serve, to love, to have. Prayer is a way of acknowledging your co-creation with the Creator. You are instruments of God's creation. You are instruments that interact with creations, and you are creators yourself in your own right. You are a means by which the Creator creates. To the extent that you connect with the Creator, your creations are aligned with the Creator. To the extent that you do not connect with the Creator, you're allowed to create what you choose on the basis of your own will. You're also allowed to create in that way. So there are two kinds of creation. Creation on the part of the ego or personal self, which is based on conditioning, and creation according to thy will, the Creator's will. The only way you can know what the Creator's will is, is to connect in some way to the Creator, to the oneness, to God, to whatever you would like to call the immense force behind all creation. This force is not separate from you. It's the same as you. You are an extension of it in the world. There's no separation between this extension and the Creator itself, just as there is no separation between your hand and the rest of your body. You're like that. You're like the hand of the Creator in this world, moving about and manipulating life, creating, choosing, doing, making, manufacturing. You are the instrument of God, and this instrument is not separate from God. It is God. It's an extension of God, not separate in any way. There is a sense of being separate because you've forgotten your origin. You don't realize that you're connected to all that is. That is as it's meant to be, for the time being. Then you're meant to rediscover who you are. In the meantime, you have a will of your own, a renegade will, you could say, a will that is separate from thy will, which can act independently and in ignorance of thy will, and that is allowed. The Creator is curious to see what will be created when one is detached from or at a distance from the Creator, and so it allows this, all the while knowing that one day you'll realize your connection to all that is. So it allows you to pursue your personal desires, your ego's desires, drives, fears, and sense of lack. The Creator allows you to respond to life as if you were completely separate, and to discover, learn, grow, and to evolve from this misunderstanding. All the while, it brings you understandings to correct that misunderstanding. It brings you teachers and teachings. And life itself is a teacher that ultimately brings about this understanding. Prayer is a means of connecting you with the divine and with your divine self. What is surrendered in prayer is the false self, the ego. When you pray, you must surrender that false sense of self. Prayer is a surrendering of this sense of self. It is humbling yourself enough to say, I don't know what is best. I don't know what to want. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make my life happen. Show me, help me, teach me. I am open, available, and willing to receive your guidance. I know my own ego is incapable of providing guidance that will make me happy. The challenges in life bring you to a point of surrender, where you're willing to surrender your desires, ideas, beliefs, and feelings 
to something higher that does know how to guide your life. You realize that what's been guiding your life is flawed, undependable, and untrustworthy, and you're willing to surrender your belief that you can make your life happen in a certain way. You realize that life is not in your hands, but in the hands of something much greater. All that is left to do, then, is to state that surrender and ask for help for a true sense of knowing what is right and true for you in any particular moment. The information you receive after asking is always only good for a particular moment. You ask and receive what you need for that moment. For other moments, new prayers are needed. When you feel lost, you pray again, ask again, open yourself up and say, I don't know what is true for me. Help me, guide me, help me know, help me understand, help me heal, help me serve, help me create what you want me to create in this life. What is the instrument I'm meant to be now, in this moment, on this day? All you can ever know is what you're meant to do and experience now, today, in this moment. And so you pray on an ongoing basis. What now? What do you want for me now? What is thy will for this instrument now, today? How can I be of service now? How do I need to grow now? What do I need to understand now? What do I need to heal now? Asking these questions is a way of realigning yourself. And yet, when you're very present in your life, there's no need to ask, because in presence, there's a continual listening for the truth, for what's next, for what you're being moved to do now. Presence is alignment with thy will. It is alignment with yourself as the instrument of thy will. Whenever you're present, you respond naturally and spontaneously to thy will. Prayer is needed whenever you feel off-base, off-kilter, stressed, contracted, or confused, when the ego has caught you up in its mind stream and caused you to believe some misunderstanding. Then you need to stop and say, Wait, I don't understand. I don't know what I need to do now. I don't know how I need to be now. Please help me realign to a state of peace flow, and spontaneity. That's what prayer is for. The false self's world is one of needing to push, hurry, and make things happen, of confusion about what to make happen, or believing you know when you don't. Prayer is a bridge that takes you from that state of consciousness to the state of peace, flow, and spontaneity of just knowing what's true and right in that moment to do. When you are present, there's a natural, spontaneous flow of activity or non-activity. There's no questioning of an activity, but just doing or stopping of doing that naturally occurs with no thoughts about it, no confusion, no alternate opinion about it, just simple. You find yourself moving, and that moving feels natural, right, simple, uncomplicated, and it's effective. That's when you know you're the instrument you're meant to be, and acting in alignment with God. You also know very well when you're not acting as that instrument. You know very well when you're not in alignment, because it doesn't feel good to be out of alignment. Life feels difficult, confusing, upsetting, and stressful, and negative emotions are involved. You all know exactly what being out of alignment feels like when the instrument has gone rogue and it's not doing thy will. The gentleness of God allows you to have that experience. God allows you to go rogue, to have whatever experience you're having but God has built into life a sense of stress and discomfort 
when that's going on, which is meant to be a sign that brings you home. That discomfort is a signal. I'm out of alignment. I need to stop. I need to question. I need to pray. Prayer is a means for becoming that instrument of thy will again. You don't have to know anything to pray. What is required is more of a willingness to not know, a surrendering of knowing that allows you to pray. You say, I don't know. I'm lost. I'm confused. To be able to pray, you have to be humble enough to ask for help. There are lots of reasons the ego doesn't want to pray. It doesn't like to have to ask for help. It doesn't believe it needs help. Or sometimes the ego believes it isn't worthy to receive help. Even that can be a reason to not ask for help. Or the ego may have beliefs that help is not available. This is not a benevolent universe and there's no one out there listening to my prayer, so why pray? A common reason why people don't pray is they think of it as childish. But you are to be as little children, open, receptive, in awe of something greater than yourself, connected to something greater than yourself, and knowing that. That's the little child. The child knows the greatness of the universe. The child is in awe of the universe. He or she hasn't figured it all out, doesn't believe that he or she has the answers to everything. The ego believes it has answers or that it should. Therefore it can't or feels it shouldn't ask for any help. But this is a vast, vast universe, a mysterious universe. There is so much you don't understand that you just pretend to know. So realize what you don't know. Realize how much there is to know that you don't know. Be humble. Be like a little child in that humility and ask. Be sure to ask whenever you need help for whatever you need, and it will be given to you. Know that it will be given to you in one form or another, at one time or another. What you really need is always given to you, especially when you ask for it. Ask for things you really need. Ask for wisdom, love, inspiration, creativity, strength, and courage. These are the things you really need to get through life, and these are the things you actually already have. To ask for them evokes them. It brings them out in you. It makes you realize that you do already have them. Like Dorothy and her red slippers, you have always had everything you've ever needed to live this life. But your ego has kept you from knowing this. So ask. And that allows you to know this again. It allows you to know the truth, to own those red slippers, and to use them. Thank you for being here. I am with you always.